you may have heard the old country joke, I saw it on the radio. One aspect of creativity that is hard to discuss on a podcast, which is a purely oral medium, is photography and graphic design. But we are going to meet that challenge today with our guest, Michael Largent. Welcome to this episode, number two in season two of Dialogues with Creators. In this session, we are going to change gears. Up until now, our guests have mostly worked in the written word as playwrights, filmmakers, novelists, actors, and historians. We are taking a turn and going to speak to a visual artist today. Our guest is Michael Largent, who is the lead faculty of the Digital Media Department at Chattanooga State Community College. He has a long career in photography, shooting for industries and news media outlets, including photography and graphic design for Glider Rider, a magazine for ultralights and hang gliding. He also designed Delta Airlines magazine for children, Fantastic Flyer. So he's had a 30 year career as a graphic designer. He started teaching in 2006 and went full time in 2015 at Chattanooga State Community College. He earned his Master of Fine Arts from Azusa Pacific University in 2017. He likes to use the phrase artist educator for what he does now. He's still very active in both fields. He has also taught at Southern Adventist University and Covenant College and lectured at Lee University. Welcome to the podcast, Michael. Thank you, Barbara. Or should I call you Dr. Tucker? No, just Barbara. Okay. I only use Dr. Tucker when I want to scare someone. So anyway. <laughs> so Michael, you're an artist, our first artist on here, first visual artist, I should say. What does that mean to you? Is that not the dumbest question? What does being an artist mean to you? Interestingly enough, it means showing people things ways they haven't seen it. So I like to show things that are unseen, unnoticed. I like to show things that have been post-processed in Photoshop, which I absolutely love. Um, not a purist in the sense that, you know, no Photoshop will touch my photos, but I just like taking photos and then just messing them up just for fun and making things out of it that may or may not, may or may not look like what it is. Uh, and I think creating something with a little bit of mystery is fun. Uh, making people say, what is that? It's like, well, what do you think it is? That's, that's part of the fun. Um, uh, so it's uh, it's a lot of different things. I mean, it's impossible to define art because every time you say art is, somebody's going to come behind you and say, no, art is this, or that's not art. So it uh, there are books and books and books and books and books trying to define art, visual art, and it's just never going to happen. Yes, I was watching a a YouTube video from a conservative source and they were arguing that how modern art was not art because of some reason and that classical art was. And I thought, well, you know, as much as I prefer the classical art, I can't buy your argument. I just don't right. think it's that simple, <laughs> you know? Yeah. There's a video series out there called the banishment of beauty. And the, uh, the speaker talks about how, the art world, T-A-W, uh, has completely abandoned beauty as one of the prerequisites for what is art. And so he he also harkens back to the classical where amazing skills and technologies and talents were absolutely involved. But in a very real sense, art has transformed from what you can do with your hand to the conceptual. If you can think up something that somebody else hasn't thought up yet, then there's a good chance that you can make art out of it. 
So the reality is almost that the artist statement has replaced um, a lot of things because a lot of things don't make any sense at all until you read the artist statement, uh, and some of my work included. Interesting. Is How would you apply that to your um, exhibit that you did for your MFA? So my exhibit was called Reconsidering uh, Residuum, because whenever you're getting a master's, you have to use big words uh, that don't make any sense to anybody. So basically, it's like rethinking trash. So because I was the creative director for a large format printing company here in Chattanooga before I started teaching full time, uh, we would print on large sheets, like four foot by eight foot sheets of metal or plastic or wood, uh, normally for a client. Then we would cut out whatever it was that the client wanted and ship that to them. But all the stuff that was left over would just get put into a dumpster for recycling. So for my master's degree, I decided to take advantage of what I already knew. So I would pull stuff out of the trash can, put it on the floor on a big piece of white vinyl, and photograph it from multiple different angles. And then I would take those different angles, combine two or three of them together, and make these in in possible objects and it was basically using different modes in Photoshop it turned everything that had originally been white into black and then any color would be the opposite of what it was so you've got all this intertwining metal and plastic and different cutouts and all these different things and I've purposely left a lot of black around them just as if they were objects of desire, uh, hmm. things that were made beautiful, things that were like perhaps in a catalog or something. And because these things are so abstracted that people will put their own ideas into what it is. It's like, oh, it's a Viking ship. No, it's a flying saucer. <laughs> no, it's, I don't know what it is. It's an x-ray of a architectural, you know, rendering. It's a house that has been looked at through x-ray. Uh, so that's fine and good. But the reality is it really, my master's degree subconsciously came about of the fact that I'm an only child with 23 brothers and sisters. <laughs> uh, those are all foster children. Um, ones that had lived with us for more than three years. And in fact, you know, since 1972, when I started college, there are still several of them that are still in our lives. So the, the, the thing that came to mind was my parents took kids were who un, were unwanted, uh, unvalued, and literally discarded, brought them in, and made beautiful things out of them. And that's very real. Oh. Sorry, I'm thinking emotional about that. Uh, it's very much, it was a subconscious realization, visualization of that, that I took things that were thrown away and, and not valued and photographed them and made beautiful objects out of them. Were you conscious of that in the process or did Absolutely it come later not. on? Oh, Absolutely that is, that's neat. Yeah. Yes, I'm very interested in, at least from the writing standpoint, of where the, the unconscious and the subconscious it comes into it and then later you can see it but um but it's it's there and it's sometimes sure. a little scary <laughs> well it's very scary and the, and the fact of the matter is that i never saw it until one of my mentors on my mfa degree was looking at my work and she knew my story and she was the writer in of the group uh she was, you know, the, my, uh, the peer for my master's thesis and, and all of that, that not the peer, but the, uh, the mentor. And she identified it as being that, and I'm going like, that is so amazing. Cause I, I never saw it and she did. And that's, it, it absolutely rang true, mm -hmm. rings true. So, 
So I could have named these pieces instead of this weird name I came up with. Um, I, I just could have named them like Pat and <laughs> Dale and Barbara, one of my sisters, um, and Joellen. I mean, I, I literally could have done that and it would have not made any sense to anybody until they read the artist statement. Mm -hmm. So is photography the main area you work in? Do you work in anything else, uh, other medium? Well, pretty much photography is my passion. Mm -hmm. uh, it, um, I, I took four years of drawing in college, and I can draw conclusions. Uh, <laughs> that one of the conclusions I've drawn is that I can't draw. So <laughs> I, I absolutely love Photoshop because I can undo things that I mess up. Uh, yes, I know you can paint over things. Yes, I know you can erase things, but I just love Command Z. It just it makes me happy. Uh, it's my favorite tool of all, other than, of course, my Macintosh computers. Those are pretty awesome tools, too. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, there is uh, um, part, the hardest thing were on my master's was after decades of basically trying to view projects as a graphic designer from the... <laughs> Uh, the client's point of view and what their intentions and needs were, but also looking at the viewer or the consumer's point of view, what their needs were. So you've got this relationship between the the originator and the target audience. And so I was basically just trying my best to wrap myself in the skin of both. So when I started a master's degree, they said, so what's your visual problem you're trying to solve? And I'm going like, I've never had one. So, uh, and it was, um, you know, I tried some other things because I looked at the MFA as a time to experiment. I mean, I realized very quickly that, that the master's degree is not to teach you how, but to teach you why. <laughs> And, you know, why are you doing these things? Because, I mean, everything I saw the very first MFA show, I'm going like, I could do all that stuff right now. And then my mentor said, yeah, but why are you doing it? So we actually had a little symbol written on the wall that why, W-H-Y, is greater than how, H-O-W. And that just has become so real. So I experimented with painting, I experimented with drawing. Um, it just was unsuccessful and unsatisfying. So I just stuck with what I knew. But by the same tokens, I really, really, really pushed as many boundaries as I possibly could. I, I spent all four summers just experimenting with things until I actually had to do a show. And I'm going like, okay, I'm just going to lock down on this one thing. Very long answer for a very short question. No, but th that's why we're on this podcast, because it's I ask questions and throw in a few comments, but I want to hear from folks who are actually creating. And that's what it's called, Dialogues with Creators. Sure. And I, I'm really fascinated by that. I, but what you said about the, the sign on the wall, the why is greater than the how. Yes. Do you think that was something that was particular to Azusa Pacific since it's a, a Christian university or was it just to, that was not really the relevant thing there? Well, I mean, being a Christian university and it was the only one I could find at the time that offered a MFA uh, that li offered limited residency. Um, we actually had a, um, a, a ordination service, a commissioning service, a commissioning service where we were used Genesis 31, where God says to Moses, my, you know, look at my servants, uh, Bezalel and Aholiab, I have filled them with my spirit to do great hmm. works. So we, uh, we had a commissioning service where each one of the 10 people in our cohort stood up and they did a blessing on us. Oh my. So I asked her, our faculty, 
They said, so do they all cry at like Yale with <laughs> that, uh, you know, these big giant art colleges, do they cry their first session? And he said, I don't think so, but I, don't, I also don't think that they really bring the spiritual into this. Mm -hmm. So as far as the question, why versus over how, I, I really believe that the bachelor's degrees are how. Mm -hmm. And that the master's degrees are just taking it a step deeper, you know, maybe five or six steps deeper and mm -hmm. just making you think about why you're doing what you're doing and how is it relevant? How is it reflecting me? Uh, I, I believe that all art reflects the artist mm -hmm. and, um, and frankly, there are some messed up artists out there, in, in my humble opinion. Um, but it's, you know, I've decided I'm never going to be a great artist because I grew up happy, never been abused, you know, <laughs> never, just none of these, no addictions to any substances. Uh, and apparently I'm just not angry enough Um uh, no, I don't think of anger when I think of you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went to a college conference office. Uh, it was a college uh, college art association conference in New York City. I felt so out of place. I mean, it was just Trump had just been elected, and I was not angry. Uh, I, sorry, not a fan, but. Uh, I, I think the thing that gives me more peace than anything is what Jesus told Pilate. You would have no power if my father didn't give it to you. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's just because I'm fatalist. I don't know if it's because I'm Calvinist. Uh, just for some weird reason, I, I think God is in control. And mm -hmm. nothing surprises him. So uh, we've had good presidents. We've had bad presidents. Uh, the Republic has survived them all. Yes. So far. So, um, is there anything but about photography that draws you? And I think this is where I wanted, we were talking before, sort of your story and, and your mentor and your undergrad and all that. Okay. And, you know, what it was about photography, because you said you tried the drawing and you drew the conclusion that you couldn't right. draw too well, or the, at least you probably drew very well, but it was not to the standard you wanted. Uh, maybe or well, it was not the standard, by... right? Our teacher wanted either. Oh, okay. I mean, <laughs> so, I, I think that what I lacked in talent of being able to look at something, go through my brain into my hand, um, it just kind of got stuck in my brain. So that what I lacked in skill and able to copy what I see, I made up for in creativity. So I would just like do interesting things like lay on a piece of cardboard and trace around myself and then, you know, draw a, um, or tape a piece of uh, caution police line, to, you know, don't cross. And, and one time for a project, I, uh, actually I skipped chapel. Um, so I, Walked in the front door, checked in, ran out the back door, got in my car, drove home, tried to figure out what am I going to do for my drawing project that is due in an hour. Uh, passed some golden rods in the ditch, slammed on the brake, stopped, pulled the golden rods out of the ground, threw them in the car, finished getting home, found a big piece of poster board, got a hammer and pounded the golden rod uh, sap and flowers and all that kind of stuff into the piece of poster board and then took a piece of charcoal and drew around where the leaves had been and the flowers had been uh, ran back to class, turned it in and it was brilliant. You know, he just absolutely <laughs> loved it. So did I draw when I was supposed to draw? No. Did I make up for it in creativity? Yes, I did. Um, I got you. So um but the thing I love about photography is my photography teacher. Uh, started college not knowing what college was. 
uh, when I got there, they said, what's your major? And I'm going like, uh, what do you mean? What's major? They said, well, what do you want to be when you grow up? You want to be a preacher? No. <laughs> you want to be a missionary? No. Uh, you want to be a teacher? Oh, heck no. Uh, do you, are you musical? I said, I sing in the choir. I said, great. You can be a voice major. I'm going, okay. Cause I was 17 and didn't know any better. Um, so my voice teacher who I'm quite sure was Simon Cowell's mother, uh, about two weeks in said, Mike, you can't sing. I said, you might have a good choir voice, but you'd never go make it as a soloist. And I was so thrilled. I mean, I had to go into these little tiny cubicle rooms with a piano and practice my scales for an hour and my breathing from a diaphragm for an hour. So I would practice and practice and practice and practice and practice and practice and practice. And I'd look at my watch and five minutes had gone by. So after my teacher suggested I change my major, I took a photography class just because it sounded interesting and absolutely fell in love with it. I mean, we would go into the dark room after dinner and before I realized it, somebody was saying, guys, it's time for breakfast. So, you know, I, I found my passion. Mm -hmm. uh, by the end of the semester, I was a photo assistant for a photographer who shot uh, with a big four by five camera back in the film days. Uh, we shot Little Debbie snack cakes, and we shot carpets and bedspreads and saddles and bathtubs and jewelry and all kinds of fun stuff like that. Uh, then I got a job at a camera store as processing film and selling cameras. And then I got a job at the uh, Chattanooga News Free Press as a photographer. Did that for a couple of years. Only job I've ever been fired from. Um, apparently young and stupid and uh, the pink slip said something like unable or unwilling to follow instructions. Well, let's just say I was very distracted back in those days and my frontal cortex had not connected yet. <laughs> um, but interestingly enough, I got a job shooting for the Chattanooga Times because one of their photographers had gotten busted for or getting a kilo of marijuana in his mailbox. <laughs> so, uh, and then shot for Channel 3, the NBC affiliate here in Chattanooga as their photographer and videographer. And the day I graduated with photography degree after nine years of going to college and working 40 to 60 hours a week, paying my way through school, uh, was the last day I worked as a professional photographer and became the design director for a hang gliding magazine. Do nothing and never had a graphic design course. Just the only thing that I had was that my photography teacher taught me how to see. Huge difference between looking at things and seeing things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I learned how to boss eyeballs around, what to look at first, what to look at second, what to not even look at at all, what to not see at all. Um, the eye in photography, the eye is always going to go to what's lightest, brightest, or most in focus, faces and text. So anytime you look at a photograph, those are the, going to be the first things you see. And it's the same thing in graphic design. I mean, visual hierarchy is what it's about. In paintings, you know, that's a lot of what it's about as well. And in my photos, so it, I uh, absolutely love that this is the gifts I've been given. And I feel very strongly about that. Mm -hmm. So we all have our gifts. Uh, doing MLA style uh, of a thesis is not my gift. That's uh, that's pe what people like you do. And I'm... I'm as uh, little as we can. <laughs> well, no. MLA is not fun. No, it's not. Uh, it's even less about for the people who like yeah. me. So it's where to put the period kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so, do you think uh, now that you're in teaching, you're an artist educator, where does creativity come into teaching? <laughs> Got any other questions? <laughs> no. Um, honestly, I I tell my students I'm your Sherpa. I've climbed this mountain before, you know, I've been a graphic designer, 
Uh, I can tell you how to get there. And creativity is almost always combining two things that don't necessarily go together. Uh, so for example, uh, there's an artist in here in the Chattanooga area that takes dress patterns and makes the, makes basically what looks like a dress out of those patterns. So, you know, she doesn't cut the cloth. She just takes the patterns and make it look like a dress, which is, I, you know, I've never seen that before. I think creativity and teaching is just trying to inspire my students to look, to see, uh, to try things. I mean, I tell them if you're going to fail, fail big and now, because it's not costing you any money. When you get out into the industry, when you try and fail things, somebody's got to pay for that. Uh, so, you know, I, I reward people who try and fail things so much more than people who are just going to be safe. You know, if you're not going to learn anything, number one, why are you here? Uh, so do something new, do something interesting, do something you wouldn't have done normally. And, and I allow for that kind of freedom uh, because, number one, I learn best through failure. Uh, my favorite website that I used to go to when I was learning how to design websites was yourwebsitesucks.com. And it's looking at bad work actually helps you to know what good work looks like. So, so yeah, creativity and teaching is doing stuff different. Uh, you know, for example, my photography for designers course. Uh, the first half of the semester is here's the camera, here's ISO, here's shutter speed, here's aperture. Uh, we learn how to do depth, control depth of field. We learn how to control the shutter speed for things that were stopping motion or for blowing motion. Blurring motion. Uh, we pretend like we're working for a small company, so we're doing headshots and things like that. So the second half of the semester, they pick their own topic, and I don't have any say-so as to what they pick, and then they photograph and design their own 16-page magazine. And some of my students will get all excited, and they'll do 24 pages or 20 pages and uh, just whatever they're passionate about. So that's it's been a lot of fun just to allow, you know, give my students reign to do fun stuff and stuff that they're passionate about. I really like that. The, um, the, the idea of the creativity and the risk taking, but right. we know that people are generally risk averse and this upcoming generation is particularly risk, risk averse. I've noticed. Yes. <laughs> and yet you really can't be, I don't think you can be an artist or creative in a field unless you take some risks. And, Absolutely. And even sometimes irritate some people. It's going to sound bad, but, <laughs> um, you know, or yeah. at least it makes some people uncomfortable. Let's put it right. that way. I mean, obviously there's a, there's a limit to which, what is in good taste, but. <laughs> is there? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. Uh, well, I mean, there's, there's a saying, love me, hate me, just don't ignore me. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that, you know, that is something that Hollywood and music and who have just really run with that. It's like, I'm going to do something to make you mad. Talk, you know, say my name. And that is, you know, I've heard the only sin in Hollywood is to lose money at a movie. Um, Everything, you know, everything else is, you know, is up for grabs. Mm -hmm. But if you do something safe, you're probably going to make money at it. You know, uh, we uh, won't name any particular things, but. <laughs> remakes? No. We... Your remakes, yeah. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. Where can listeners see your work? Well, I have a website. Uh, it's M Largent, L-A-R-G-E-N-T dot format 
F O R M A T dot com. Uh, formats dot com is basically one of those plug and play websites. Uh, I'm kind of at the point in my career where I'm not really seeking work as much as I used to. So uh, it's just chock full of my photographs. Um, my most, you know, the top of the list photos are my road trips that I do. Mm -hmm. So not every summer. I wish it was every summer, but for since 2017, I've done a road trip where I set my GPS on avoid freeways. And then I stop every 50-ish, every 50 miles, every 50th mile, every 50-ish miles, uh, and photograph whatever's around me. So some of things are interesting, some things are pedestrian, but it's, it's almost a photo documentary with a concept. Uh, so the first one was from Chattanooga to LA for my last uh, semester of uh, my master's degree so that that fun part was watching the typography or not the uh watching the environment turn from green to brown topography not typography topography uh second one was from uh, lansing michigan where i had gone for my mother my mother's 80th birthday to fargo north dakota because north dakota was the last of the continental states that i had not been to um, and then back to the Chattanooga area. Uh, the tough part of that one was making this cornfield look different than the last 20 cork hills. <laughs> so you know what I'm talking about if you've ever lived in the yes. Midwest. Yes. Uh, and then in 2020, I braved uh, being out there in the world and went from Boca Chica Key, which is the key just east of Key West, Drove as close to the Gulf of Mexico as I could all the way around to South Texas where the Rio Grande empties into the Gulf of Mexico at Boca Chica Beach. So that was a, a lot of fun. And then this last summer, I drove from beautiful downtown Rheingold where I, the first photo is that new uh, mural on the side of the building of Dolly Parton. Mm -hmm. So I drove from there uh, through D.C., through New York City, where I stopped for two days to vote to go to museums, uh, to Boston, where, where I spent four days at a graphic design conference, uh, through Maine, stopped in Acadia National Park and photographed the 4 a.m. sunrise. Mm. Uh, and then from there up through New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, caught a ferry for a seven hour ferry ride to Newfoundland. Um, so the ferry leaves at midnight to arrive at 7 a.m. And I drove uh, every 50th mile, even though I was in kilometer country. Um, I drove to the northernmost part of the island to a thousand year old Viking settlement. And then as far east as St. John's, uh, where just a little bit southeast of that is Cape Fear, I think. Uh, Cape something. I'm losing my brain here. Uh, where is the easternmost point of North America? And uh, so that was my final destination. So it was 7,233 miles. And I'm going to use all these road trips to put together a book of every mm -hmm. 50th mile. So, okay. Uh, did you drive? That. Did you drive back too? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was in my car. The same route? No, no. No, I drove freeways back. Okay. I'd been gone for three weeks. Uh, I was ready to get home to my wife, and yeah. she was really ready for me to come home because the trash needed to be taken out. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. So is, um, is your 50-mile project in on your website? Yes. Okay. And, and yes, it's the top four photos as you... As you go across, basically, my homepage is just a grid of projects and such. And so you click on the image and you get to see the rest of the images. And you just can scroll through, you know, swipe left, I guess, okay. and go through the. Are you going to have any exhibits or, or in galleries or something? Uh, I had an exhibit last November at the Creative Arts Guild uh, mm -hmm. in Dalton. 
Oh. And I had actually printed out my first three trips on a 33-foot-long piece of paper. Uh, so the three trips, you know, chronological order from oldest to newest, uh, basically about four by five size images going horizontally all the way across the page. Uh, so that exhibit I titled Out of One Many, which is kind of a flip of the U.S. motto, Out of Many, One, uh, because I'm kind of... This sounds like a bad word, promiscuous, as far as my photography style. Uh, I've got everything from straight photography to messed up photography to what the heck is that photography. And it really felt like there were seven different photographers showing work at that particular uh, gallery. It was one of the really big rooms there. And mm -hmm. so that was just so much fun to see a gathering of my images in the different styles uh, because several people did ask me who were their photographers and I said me and my <laughs> seven personalities uh, I, I feel like uh, who was the uh, oh what's her name who had 27 different personalities Sybil Sybil thank you yes, yes. <laughs> um, old movie okay so you you don't have anything scheduled now any exhibit? Uh, actually, this summer, uh, my wife is graduating with her bachelor's degree in teaching English as second language. She's quite convinced I'm going to die before her because of my bad sleep habits and the fact that I don't drink enough water. Uh, so she's uh, she's been teaching piano for 40 years, so she's looking for another a backup outlet uh, to survive. But uh, we're after she graduates, we're going to Israel. Oh. Uh, she's been there before. I have not. So she's going to take me to other places that she's seen. So I'm I'm hoping that we can rent a car and do uh, every 50 kilometers or maybe even every 50 miles uh, through Israel. And I think that would be a, a fun trip. Uh, she never goes with me on these because she loves me, but she's not a fan of road trips, uh, especially the three-week ones. So we're, we'll see how that goes. But Th that's a lot of together time. Trust me, uh, it is. I've done those, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the trip, yeah, the trip from from Chattanooga to L.A. I did in three days. Mm -hmm. But I'm also up, at, you know, before the sun is up, and I'm shooting after the sun is down, and she she's not a fan of that. Mm -hmm. In fact, the joke is I wasn't really sure if she'd ever seen uh, <clears throat> or if she ever knew that the sun was at the horizon twice a day. So <laughs> it's uh, that's, a, that's a horrible joke. My wife is actually graduating magna cum laude from Liberty. Um, so, yeah, she's a smart, smart lady. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, she is. She is. Well, thank you for being with us. And this was a lot of fun. Just to hear some of these stories and reconnect with you and um, some really interesting you are, uh, uh, insights. You are, like I said, you're a first visual artist, so I hope to have some more. It's a little hard to translate that into a podcast. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> but um, I think it worked. So It does. So yeah. it, um, it's been an, an amazing life. I have never been bored ever. In fact, one of my art teachers at my college says, uh, if you were, if you can get bored, then you're just not a very creative person. I agree. And that's a great way to end. Thank you, Michael. Bye-bye.